Hey guys, what's up? It's iJevin. How is everybody doing? Welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own mod pack in Minecraft. It's a step-by-step -step tutorial. It's really simple. And by the end of the day, you will be playing your own mod pack and you're going to love it. Step one for making your own mod pack is ideas, brainstorming, and what programs you're possibly going to need to build this thing. So first off, you want to start off with having an idea. There's a lot of kitchen sink packs out there, and what I mean by kitchen sink is that there's just so many mods, 100, 150, that you won't need to make one of those because they're already there. So your mod pack should be a custom idea that you've thought up. What I suggest doing is opening a quick notepad, just jotting down some ideas to help you when you're wanna, when you're in your mod selection area. So um, next up is programs because there's a lot of different ways to make mod packs, but one of the easiest ways is to use a program called MultiMC. MultiMC is a, a program that lets you control how you do things within modded Minecraft as well as vanilla Minecraft. It lets you control the instance, the Java settings, the parameters, uh, how you install mods, it installs Forge for you, and it lets you edit configs as well. So there's a lot of different ways MultiMC can help you. Down in the description, I have a link to MultiMC for you. You can just get that at MultiMC.org, I think is the website. Otherwise, that's step one, jotting down your ideas and getting your programs ready. Step two is actually building the pack. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is download MultiMC and get a working instance ready. So just create a new instance, name your instance, then pick your version of Minecraft, 1.7.10 preferably because there's a lot more mods for that. Once you have all of that set up, you want to go in the settings of this instance and you want to install Forge for that setting. It automatically chooses what version you're on so it's really easy to do. Once Forge is installed, then you can start, uh, and start installing your mods. So I highly suggest using um, curse.com because there is a heavy database of mods on that website. Now, there's lots of other ways you can get mods from the Minecraft forum and things like that, but curse.com is really the simplest. Once you have all of your mods that you feel are ready for your mod pack, you want to install them into this. So all you're going to do is click loader mods and then add mod. You can drag and drop or open a folder. So I highly suggest downloading all your mods to the same folder. That way it's really easy to load them in. Once you have all of your mods loaded in, the only other thing I suggest doing is editing your Java parameters. Um, you want to make sure that your pack is going to be able to run. So I highly suggest using one gig of memory uh, as your base and four gigs of memory or RAM as your uh, highest allocation. And you want to set your perm gen to 512 instead of what it has default. So what we have now is we have a instance that's got your forge, which is going to load your mods. You've got your mods loaded in and you've got your Java set. That way your pack can run. So this is going to build your initial instance of your mod pack. Step three is your initial testing. Once you have all of your mods loaded in, you've edited all your settings and you've made that make sure that you have forge in your pack. You want to go ahead and launch the pack and start looking for errors that you don't like. I highly suggest just getting a notepad or a pen and paper out and writing a couple things down. So one thing you really want to pay attention for is origin uh, and any imperfections in the world that you don't like. Uh, such as like pools of like sewage and things like that. So uh, when you're taking down notes, be careful to note a couple things. Note what you don't like about it. Notice the mod that it's in, and even if there's even sub layers to that, you know, maybe you write down another little jot or note about it. So, for example, say we're running two mods that have similar copper ore. Make sure that you choose one that you like because you're going to disable the other one when it comes to the config changes. So, uh, one thing that you should probably do check the overworld, check the nether, and check the end. And just make sure that there's all things there that, you know, they're okay. And if you don't like something about it, write it down in your notepad and you will get it in the next step. Another thing is if you're adding mods that have dimensions, make sure you check those dimensions as well. You want to make sure that all processes of your mod pack are very nice and packaged and clean for when it's ready to be played. So making note of everything will make this really, really simple. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Step four is where we do all the changes that you didn't like about your pack. So take your notepad that you've listed and start going down the list of mods that you want to change. So for example, say we found an ore that we didn't like that was generated by a mod, say forestry. Forestry generates copper. 
uh, and tin in their world, but you've already got copper and tin generating from another mod. So I would go into that config file, find out where that config is generating that ore, and disable it. Now you want to go through all of your mod pack uh, mods and do this for any imperfections that you found. Once you feel as though you've successfully did all of the changes, I really suggest going back and reloading your mod packs, not the same worlds, but make new worlds and just keep checking. Do this over and over again until you find that your pack is exactly how you like it. Remember, if you're if you're going to be sharing this with friends, now one thing I can't condone is sharing Mojang files. That is highly illegal because that's a, a paid product, and I can't I can't say what you can do with you and your friends. You know, if you want to share it, that's your own problem. But one thing you can do is make sure that the product that you're giving to yourself is highly highly clean so you want to make sure that you got all those imperfections that you don't like once you have all your config changes done keep checking the worlds just to make sure they're good and then we can move on to the next step step five is probably one of the most important steps to making a mod pack gameplay testing no matter what you do you're going to have to test this mod pack the more testing that you have the better the pack will turn out because you have to go through all these mods and make sure they're compatible with each other. Now, most of the time, everything is going to be all right, but in some instances, mods will uh, clash, making a problem within the world. Sometimes you're going to come up against random crashes, texture changes, anything that, you know, there's, there's just so many little things that could be wrong. Uh, you have to find out and change those things. So once you've found a bug or two, uh, sometimes you can fix those bugs within the config files or changing an item ID number. There's a lot of things you can do to make this work. So once again, I cannot stress this enough. Test, test, test. The more testing you do, the better. Once you have completely played through your pack or had others played through your pack multiple times, you'll be able to deduce that the pack is ready for final production uh, and be ready for yourself to play or whatever you're doing this for. So testing is very important. The more hours you have in this pack tested, the better it will be. Step six is our final step. Now this is a little bit tricky on how to explain. The first thing that you should absolutely do before anything is make sure that the mod pack is ready to be published. And when I say by published is, I mean, if you're just giving it to your friends, make sure that they're not going to crash instantly, you know? You want to make sure that everything is good to go. Once you have that good, uh, you should really be ethical about this and try to get permission to use these mods. So most of the time, mod authors will allow people to use their mod, but sometimes mod authors aren't so lenient. So what you need to do is for each mod that you've used go to their page and most of the time on the download page or on the home page they will give instructions about your mod pack don't just instantly message them they get that probably a hundred times a day so make sure that you have permission to use the mod and if you don't have permission to use the mod uh this is where your instruction file is going to come in handy so once you have you know determined what mods you have permission for which ones you don't you can start typing out this text file and your text file is basically going to say how to install this where the config files go, where the mod folder goes, because since you're not using a launcher, they're going to have to do it themselves. Uh, since you can't distribute the Mojang files either, uh, you, they, it's really simple though. So um, what you need to do is just make yourself a, a new folder, name it your mod pack. Inside of that folder, make three things. The first one is going to be a subfolder named mods. The second one's going to be a subfolder named conf config files. And the third one's going to be an install file. So once you have all of your mods and all of your edited configs inside of those folders, you need to let them know how to install this. So just type a clean text file saying, hey, this is how you install it. Now this is, it's all going to vary on what mods you have. So what you would like to do is say, hey, you need to put the mods inside the mod folder. This is after we've installed Forge, of course. You need to install Forge always first because it's going to generate these folders. Once Forge generates the folders, put your mods in the mod file, configs in the fig file, and if there's any changes or scripts or anything like that that you need to have them install, uh, this is the time to do it. As well as for any of those mods that you didn't get permission for, you need to tell them to go download it and install it. So that's what the AT Launcher does because sometimes you're not going to have permission to use a mod, so you're going to have to tell them to install it themselves. That's, that's perfectly legal. That's that's what the, the mod is there for. So once you have all of this done, your mod pack is pretty much finished. So from step one to step five or six, uh, you have pretty much thought about your ideas. You've started building the pack. You did some initial testing to see what you liked. Then you edited those config files and then you tested the heck out of this pack and you wanted to make sure that it was okay. 
once you've done that, you've kind of gotten it ready for final production, just, you know, and giving them the mods, giving them the config files, and telling them how to install it. That is basically, in a nutshell, how to make a mod pack. Now, I know I didn't go in very in-depth about this. There's a lot more that can be done. I mean, if you're making a custom pack, this can take weeks to months and, you know, half a year po possibly to make a really, really good mod pack. It just depends on the situation. This is a basic guideline. I never said that this would work 100%. This is just how I do the step-by-step -step processing for how to make a mod pack. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Generator challenge for this video is going to be 900 likes, guys. Let's see if we can beat that challenge. Question of the day is, how did you like this video? Did the step-by-step -step process work for you? Let me know down in the comment section below. Hope you guys all have a fantastic day. This is my Jeff.